is desire. Ignite desire. This is about finding out where you're at in your life right now. Where are you at in your life right here, right now? Taking a personal inventory. Where are you at physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Before you can start your journey, you have to know where you're at. You have to have a beginning. A beginning point. You have to find something within you that kindles your flame. You and you alone are unique and talented and wonderful with all sorts of passion and all sorts of intellect and all sorts of possibilities. But it is up to you to take the initiative. It is up to you to move yourself forward. Ignite desire. Second, gain awareness. Without learning, life just sinks. I can say it more clearly. You have to learn from life's experiences. Everything. Constantly learning. Constantly gathering new information. Constantly seeing other people's perspective. Trying to gain knowledge and use that in a proper way to have wisdom. But my question to you here as you gain awareness is what will you do with your life? At the end of your life, what will you look back on and have achieved? What will you be known for? You see, this doesn't magically just appear randomly because of happenstance. Lives of great achievement are formed years and years and years earlier. As I said earlier, you'll have setbacks as you do this. Never ask why. Always ask what and how. What can I learn from it? How can I make me better, and how can I help others? Pay the price to formulate your long view, or your vision, or some future state that you are passionate about, because it doesn't come to you free. Third, find meaning. Meaning is really important in life. There's great power in purpose. When you have purpose, you are invincible. You can never lose. Purpose is what fuels your long view. Having meaning and understanding is what gives you the energy because your, your willpower will wane and you get weak. You know, when I go to Chick fil A and after I have a nice, healthy sandwich, I look at those freaking cookies they started making. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to have a cookie. I only have five of them with a gallon of milk. The problem is I'm not a college football player anymore, and that isn't good for me. My willpower, you know, is waning. And I said, well, if I'm going to speak to the folks at Kennesaw, I, I can't be 30 pounds overweight. I'm already 20, I'm already 30 pounds overweight. I can't be 30 more pounds overweight. The point here is, when you have purpose, it's easy to say no when there's a much stronger, deeper meaning, yes, inside of you. But again, you have to pay the price to find purpose and meaning. It's the why behind the long view. It's the reason you get up in the morning. Choice. What I have to tell you there is to use choice. It's really connects to how you accomplish your goals. Freedom runs deeper than we can possibly imagine. Our free will is a very powerful thing. All you have to do is take it away and see how, see how people fight like hell to get back. You take someone's freedom away. They will fight like mad to get that freedom back. We long to be free. We live in a free country with freedom of speech, with, with all sorts of freedoms that many people in the world don't have. Use your choice wisely. As you take an inventory of your life and you look at your choices, understand this, you are perfectly aligned to get the behavior, to get the results in your life you have right now. Your behavior has produced the results you have in your life. If you're not happy with that, don't look outside. Look at yourself and say, what do I need? What new behavior do I need to engage in? If I want to lose 30 pounds, I gotta increase my diet and exercise. And I gotta sleep and I gotta get 30, you know, 32 to 48 ounces of water in my body and be smart about it. But a lot of times we won't break it down. Think about what do I what, what are the barriers that are keeping me from my objectives? 
That's found in your choice, using it every day. First choice you need to make is love. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. It simply is. It breaks down barriers. It gives, it gives so much life in this world. It's what changed my life. Because in every single aspect of the things I share with you, there was a person or people that were there on the sidelines, rooting for me, believing in me more than I believe in myself. Love is a fabulous thing. Look for the good in everyone you deal with. I know we have relationships that go south, but if you can force yourself to just look for the good in everyone around you, you won't ever have to worry about being critical or condemning or criticizing or judging anyone. Just look for their good. It will change your life. With that, with that love anchored in your heart, you are prepared to change. Change is simply doing what you know you have to do. As you identify the new behaviors that can get you the goals, you got to change. The best way to describe this is, I fly a lot, so I was on a plane, Bo and I were on a plane coming out here from Salt Lake City, and um, it takes about three hours to get out here, and uh, the captain announced that it was going to take us three hours and 40 minutes to get out here because we had to make a detour because there was a big storm. Well, in a three and four hour flight, if you're off three degrees, instead of winding up in Atlanta, you'll wind up in Manhattan. Our lives are the same way. If we have a goal, we know what we want to do, we know why we want to do it, we know how we're going to get there, it requires constant course correction every day. If we don't, see, when these pilots take off, their flight plan goes out the window, and, they, and, and they're constantly making course corrections based on the weather, based on speed, wind, all sorts of other dynamics. The flight plan changes, but they're making constant course corrections the whole time to arrive at their destination. We're the same way. It requires constant course correction. We require constant course correction. Every day, making small decisions. What you do matters. It really does matter. Every decision you make matters. And as you constantly course correct, with your eyes clear on where you're going, why you're going there, new behavior to get you there. It's funny how you reach your destination. And because you love people, you accept them, you surround yourself with powerful people, they help you on the journey. And what happens naturally is you succeed at whatever you set your mind to doing. And as you do that, then you have a responsibility. Then you have the responsibility to reach out, to tell others, to let your impact be known. Where, my question to you is where is your legacy going to be found? Where will you make an impact? Because you are, you're right for an impact. You're a precious, wonderful, unique individual that can give so much. We like to say, uh, be that one that helps just one. Because that's really all that matters. Because what you're doing right here, right now, impacting the person you're, you're in front of. Psychologists call it being mindful, the concept of mindfulness. 98% of stress and anxiety comes from worrying about the past, or regretting the past, or worrying about the future. If we can be mindful and present with who we're with, enjoy them, be grateful for them, serve them, love them, it can make an enormous difference in our life. So, you saw the words on the screen, seven rules, make sense. You do those things, life tends to get better. I started with you. I started talking about two things. This idea that we can't succeed in life completely, utterly, totally alone. We need each other. We really do. But to reach those great heights, it starts with personal initiative. It starts with figuring out where you're going, why you're going there. Getting the people in your life to help you get there. And then get up early, going to bed late, and working hard. It's, it's not rocket science, even though I did go to Georgia Tech. It's, it's pretty simple. We like to, I like to say it says easy, but it does really hard. 
My call to you this evening, or this afternoon, is to be that one, to change yourself, get better, instead of be bitter, and be that one to help this one. Every single one of you in this audience knows someone who needs some help, knows one person. This life is sort of out of kilter. Maybe they're too scary to hang around. Help, they need it. And I'm not saying give them free stuff, give them money. I'm saying help them. It's messy. I'm saying sacrifice your time, your reputation, your money. Sacrifice everything to help someone. Because when you do that, it's safe. It's hard, but it's so worth it. That's what saved me. I was a mess. I looked fine on the outside, but I was a mess on the inside. I needed so much help. And fortunately for me, good people, good random people, reached across, reached up, reached out, and helped me just one person. That's why we created the Orange Delta Bag Initiative. We wanted to be able to take all those things I learned from the great people that helped me in my life, and we wanted to help others. This week, you're, you're, you have Homeless Awareness Week, and you're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Design University. Our initiative does four things. It allows good, trusting people to get lost in the world of kids at risk. We get lost in their world, we hear their stories, and we help them articulate their own stories. We, we help them get a path out to create their own life plan, an afterlife out. We help them leverage their life's experiences so it doesn't define them or label them as a kid that's had drug problems or a kid that's been abused or a kid that's been homeless or a kid that's had all these things happen to them. We help, we help them take those opportunities and say, hey, it's who I am. It's what it's, it's defined me. It's made me better. It's remarkable to see their progress. We support them with a family of advocates, not just one, not just two people, but a whole family of people because you never know when you're going to need help. And finally, through it all, we help them reach their potential. It's a beautiful thing. We've been able to do great things here in the state of Georgia. We're changing. In the face of foster care, you're simply through dedicated people who work tirelessly for countless hours to help these young people because they are a mess. My Kaylee and Diana Black are with us today. They run our foundation or our initiative. We would not be able to help anyone without them. I'm so grateful for their efforts. They make such a difference to so many. It's hard. It is really hard, but it's so worth it to them. So thank you. Well, that concludes my remarks. It's been great spending time with you. And again, I encourage you all to be that one to change and to be that one to help this one. Thank you.